Well, we finally got a new Marvel hero, but has it been worth the wait? My name's Al, as always, this is the Geek In Review, and this is going to be my first spoiler-free reaction to Shang-Chi. Now, I know it is going to be spoiler-free, but if you want to go into the movie with no knowledge at all, maybe you've been ignoring everything, then this probably isn't the video for you. I'm going to be discussing my general thoughts, not really anything spoiler-ish, but again, this is your final warning. A Marvel origin story, and it has been a while. We got Black Widow earlier on in the year, and to be honest, I wasn't that thrilled with it. There was too much CGI, and the whole point of the movie was just a setup for what was going to come next, because we knew what happened with Natasha. She's dead! But hey man, you might have liked that film, and that's perfectly fine. It was okay, it was a definition of a Marvel popcorn movie. But Shang-Chi, I'm glad to say, is a lot better, and one of the things, or one of the main issues that I had with Black Widow was the villains in most Marvel films are pretty terrible but in Black Widow they were almost non-existent. Shang-Chi is a lot better when it comes to this department. If you think more like Killmonger or Thanos, the villain in this, I mean he isn't really a villain, that's what makes good villains villains is it's just a different point of view. They don't really want to destroy the world. Now, I'll be honest, I wasn't really that sold on this film from all the promotional material that I'd seen before I went in, and I think that's my own bias. I'm not a huge sort of kung fu or martial arts movie fan. I like The Matrix and Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, which certainly, Crouching Tiger, this film, does feel a little bit like it, especially in the second half, but it's not too much in... But those are sort of my limits of where martial arts films start and end for me. I've never really been into that whole scene. I've never really understood it. Again, if you like it, that's perfectly fine. I'm not having a go. Everyone's entitled to like what they want to like at the end of the day. And I'm glad to say I was pleasantly surprised. This is a pretty great, pretty solid film. All the characters and all the actors in it are really good. I mean, everyone is really strong. There's no one that's really lacking behind. The comedy, yeah, Aquafina, it does kind of rely on her a little bit, but she is really good in this film. I hadn't seen her in a lot of stuff before this other than the Jumanji film, I think. I think I might have seen her in a few other things, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But the character and the actor that I was really looking forward to in this was Simo Liu himself. Now, he's been in a show called Kim's Convenience, which sadly ended earlier on this year. If you haven't heard about it, definitely check it out. It's a great Canadian comedy. And I won't say any more on that other than his character was really starting to get developed on that show when it got cancelled and he did have a lot of strong thoughts on the cancellation of that show and he's also had a lot of strong thoughts on social media recently about Shang-Chi, about how it's getting released and about the impact it's going to have. And although I compared it to Black Panther a minute ago, it doesn't really have that level of now, I just don't know if this is because of the situation that we're in at the moment with lockdown and the pandemic in the world, but this is a great film, but it is not going to land the way that Black Panther landed, and it isn't going to change the landscape the way that Black Panther changed the landscape. So, I can understand why Sim is very excited to be in a Marvel film, quite rightly so, so would I, especially if this, you're the star. And when I say he's solid in it, and when I say solid, I mean the guy is toned, the fights are brilliant, they're really well choreographed, there's a great display of martial arts, kung fu, and then sort of mystical powers on top of that. One of the things that put me off of this was the mystical element, because how many times can a guy holding an energy ball between his hands be dramatic and exciting? Especially when things like Mortal Kombat had come out earlier on in the year, but as I said, all the fights and the CGI is solid in this movie. Now, I'm not saying that I don't love everything about it. The third act does change things up a bit and they do lean into a lot more of the mystical fantasy stuff than I thought they were gonna. Now every time Marvel does this, even going back to Thor, I was like how are they going to do this on screen? When it went from Iron Man 2 to Thor I thought how are they going to bring Space Vikings on screen? And then when it got to Doctor Strange I'm like how are they going to bring this mystical sorcerer into the world? And they do it every time and they do it very well and this is no exception certainly. Ten Rings and how they work does look great. I can't really go into too much detail. There is a post-credit scene that I would highly recommend, and 
I don't think I'm going to do a spoiler review of this film because Shang-Chi isn't a Marvel property that I've ever read, touched or looked at. And to be honest, I didn't want to do it before this film. I wanted the experience of going at it fresh and not knowing too much because it's been absolutely years since I've had that in a comic book film and I'm glad that I did. So look out for our video that's probably going to come Monday about the post credit scene and where I think that's going to go. Potentially that is going to be huge and it's going to have galactic implications but I'll talk about that later on. Let's get back to the movie. Now the world that this opens up is pretty interesting but it's no Wakanda as I said. It can easily be built into bigger and better things and after all this is just the first out not for this just side of the MCU but for Shang-Chi himself. And as I said, I'm not a fan of the property, so or I wasn't familiar with the property, I should say. I'm definitely a fan of the property now, but I wasn't familiar with it before going into this film, so there'll be Easter eggs all over it that I'm not picking up on and I'm missing. I've already seen things about references to Dragon Ball Z, but that's not a show that I ever watched either. But if there's anything that you've seen or you picked up, let me know in the comments below or contact me on Twitter. As you would expect, there is classics to the kung fu stuff of old but Aquafina doesn't show up wearing a yellow jumpsuit looking for revenge thank god part of me did think they might put a nod to that in somewhere but Marvel as always has been pretty tasteful with how it's doing it but Shang-Chi himself he's a very likeable character it's a really good first outing but I wonder who they're going to team him up with going forward when I, before I watched this film, I couldn't see this guy in an Avengers sort of lineup. Not with the old Avengers that we know. I know it's going to change in the next few years with the sort of new Avengers or the Dark Avengers or however they're going to adapt it. But I was worried about how this guy was going to fit into this world. And again, the ending of this film, it does set this up really well. But I don't think that this is going to be the massive hit for this, for this sort of world initially I think the second one when they follow it up is going to be absolutely huge if you think about it in terms of Captain America the first one the first Captain America was initially just a setup and then when the Winter Soldier came along that was just a huge explosion and expansion into the Captain America and the shield and the Winter Soldier and the Hydra and all that history so I expect that from Shang-Chi and the sequel nothing's been announced yet but the box office is looking amazingly strong a lot better than I actually thought it was going to be considering what happened to Suicide Squad about four weeks ago. And there is more stronger mystical connections as well with things that may have appeared already in other Marvel properties or may going to appear as well. It does seem that this is going to connect to, I don't know about the multiverse of I think it might either be the multiverse or the greater sort of Marvel universe as in space, the Captain Marvel stuff and the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. The, let's say the post credit scene or one of the post credit scenes is very interesting because it has a lot of things in it in, that you wouldn't expect. But all in all, I really enjoyed this film. I can see why it's getting such huge reviews. What did you guys think of it? Did it live up to the hype? Were you looking forward to it? Were you not? Did you just not care? As I said, this is just a very brief reaction video because of the fact that I've just came out of the cinema. But this is definitely a film I would recommend seeing on the big screen. It is going to be up on Disney in about 45 or 44 days. And from what I understand, it's going to be included in the Disney Plus membership. You're not going to have to pay $30 or whatever it is for premium access. But... Don't wait. I know that not everyone's comfortable going to the cinema and that's absolutely fine. I understand that. I'm not hugely keen on it myself. But the way that the fights and everything are done in this film, you will get a lot more out of it watching it on the big screen than you will at home. But yeah, as I said, let me know what you think. What did you like about this film? Did you like this film? What? Let me know in the comments below or you can reach me on Twitter at The Geeks Reviews. My name's Al, as always thanks for watching, please leave a like on this video and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already that would mean a lot. Take care of yourself.